Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at Two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Hi Kelly. Hi Marsha. How are you? I am well <laughs> and I mean well. <laughs> No sniffling? No. No. No cough. Whatever whatever the symptoms are. Of. Yeah. Actually, I don't think sniffling is one of the, is one of the symptoms mm-hmm. of the COVID-19. Well, I was going to say, in case nobody knows what we're talking about. Yes. Should we tell them what we're talking about? <laughs> sure. Well, first of all, we're recording on March the 13th, mm-hmm. Friday the 13th. Oh, March- Friday the 13th. And it's about, we started, well, it's about 1.30 now at Pacific Standard Time, mm-hmm. no, Pacific Daylight Time, right? Yes. Aren't we on Daylight we Savings are. Time, right? So anyway, the point of that is the president just about an hour ago, I think, 45 minutes ago, declared a uh, national uh, state of emergency. Um, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, I I didn't listen. I started listening a little bit to the press conference, and then mm-hmm. we had to stop to record. So I don't know exactly how that changes things in terms of um, what we're doing. Right, the impact. Uh, you in Seattle have you have quite a few cases in kind of an, a hot area. We yeah, don't have any it, cases in Monterey County, but all the counties around us do have have cases, and they are what they call community spread. Mm-hmm. So. They don't, you know, there's no, like, patient zero that they've linked it back to or... The first I became aware of it really was that the um, there's an uh, assisted living facility in Kirkland, Washington, where they've had, I think the, I think I've got this correct, 18 patients or residents have passed away. Wow. What I found especially heartbreaking is they knew they were not going to survive, they were dying, but they didn't let their families come in and see them because oh, of... right. Transmission. Uh, and so they could not... Transmission, and so they could not be there with them, and I just find that utterly heartbreaking. Having been through it with both my mother and my father, right? Um, I, I just don't, under- yeah, yeah, very difficult. Um, mm-hmm. And um, my mother's gone now; it's been what two years now. But she was at uh, a assisted living facility um, not too far from me, Ida Culver House, Ravenna, and I heard on the news that they have a case there too. Oh wow! And in fact, I think that person passed away too. So. Yeah. I, I do know, I remember when my mom was there at Ida Culver and they were great. Um, I, I, they were, the staff was fantastic, but they, the big fear always was the flu. There was one winter where there, somebody had the flu and they quarantined everybody. So the, all the residents could no longer take meals in the dining room. They had to stay in their rooms and have their meals brought to them. And Right. I remember and, uh, that was happening when I was visiting. Okay. That the dining room was closed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I do remember that because of the, yeah. uh, because of cases of the flu. Yeah. So it's been really interesting. Yeah, I know y- your campus is going to close probably. It's not closed yet, is it? Are you closing? No, the, we have spring break. This is the Friday mm-hmm. before spring break, and we have spring break next week. And so they have not made any kind of decision they have told us to prepare to put our classes online um, and they've gotten a lot of materials ready for us and the state chancellor's office has has an application process for us to apply for what they call a Mm -hmm. blanket distance education approval and we've done that but they have not pulled the trigger on it yet right at this point right now my classes are still meeting when spring break is over Um, but but they're working with the monterey county public health department and it helps i mean they can they can you know push the push the decision down the road a bit because because no one will be in class this coming week so yeah there's some time to to think about it but meanwhile the faculty are are um at my college are pretty much all certain that it will happen colleges all around us have done it so Mm -hmm. yeah even though we don't have 
we don't have a confirmed case yet in Monterey County. It, you know, it, it's coming. There, there's no, I don't have any doubt in my mind that there will not be cases in Monterey County. We're yeah. not that, we're not that special. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Ben's his school is closed. Um, they're on mm. the quarter system, so they're closed till the uh, through the to the end of the quarter. Okay, um, but they're and, I mean they're doing doing classes virtually, correct? Yeah. So yeah. the the campus is closed, but classes are, are still yeah. going on. And um, I don't know if all the he's at a community college. I don't know if all the community colleges in Seattle did this, but. Um, Last year, we had this really bad uh, snowstorm, and the campus was closed for t- over two weeks. And mm-hmm. so what they did this year to prepare for it is they got everything in place to do online yeah. um, classes. And so I, I, don't, I think that from, from my understanding, from what Ben is telling me, they already had that in place. So right. it was an easy transition just to go to online. So, But I'm having to get used to having him home. No, let me clarify. It's not having him home, but having him uh, online. So usually when he's home, he, I can just ask him questions and do mm-hmm. stuff, go in there and whatever. Well, I'm just, just staying out of the basement all day long because he's in class. Right. And he's got his headset on and it's a video. I think we were talking about, I think you were using Zoom. Zoom, yeah. To, to do um, the classes. So I, I learned my lesson. Don't just walk into his room because he <laughs> I might be walking into the classroom. You might be on, on the classroom, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I've am i had to sort of retrain myself over the last couple of days. Just don't go don't, – I don't even go down the basement when mm-hmm. he's home. I just well, want to stay out of there. I really feel for – we haven't in Salinas – the the K-12 school districts have canceled events, but they haven't mm-hmm. – they haven't sent the students home yet. But I feel for all of, all of you out there who are parents who have your mm-hmm. children home from school, um, and then you have to – I mean, it's the, you know, the right thing to do to keep them safe, but then you have to deal with that issue, you know, the, the, the fact that you weren't expecting to have your children home. Yeah. Um, and and how maybe you, you work yeah. or I, it's mm-hmm. just a difficult, a difficult, I feel, yeah, I really right. feel for people. My situation is, is, you know, it's uncertain, but it's really simple. I just, I'll just put my classes online and I have spring break to kind of prepare for it compared to what. Well, and it's a bit of an eye, an eye opener too, uh, listening to the conversations from the superintendents of the school districts that have closed, the students that rely on um, the lunches. Right. Um, and some students are getting breakfast, lunch, and in some cases they're actually, they're talking about the, the superintendent of the North Shore School District saying that a lot of their students actually get dinner too. It's mm, sent home mm-hmm. with them. Um, and yeah, what do you do with those children, th- those right. students that, uh, what's the term for it? Food, um, food precarious. Food insecure. Food, food insecure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and that issue and something that we don't think of is because we're middle class, you know, um, not everybody has access to the internet in yeah. their home. That's and an not issue everybody for has, us, yeah. And not everybody has a computer in their right. home. Right. Um, so there's Or a, if they, there's, like in our area, we have a, a large part of our county is, our district is rural. And mm-hmm. so some of the areas don't have the bandwidth mm-hmm. to be yeah. able to do the the teleconferencing. Yeah. So we're all just kind of having to be flexible, you know, at mm-hmm. the, you know, with, with our students. Generous one of the things that that I've been trying to 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 say to people is you know we we are going to need to be generous with ourselves because we're not going to be as good at teachers as we were right mm-hmm. and people who are working at home are probably not going to be as good or productive working at home as they unless they do it all the time yeah as they were so we have to be generous with ourselves and we have to be generous with our colleagues right who are Mm -hmm. who are trying to work this out too and generous with our students you know that that they didn't necessarily sign up for online classes maybe on purpose you know Mm -hmm. and so so now they are all very worried about about what's going to happen and what does this mean for their GPA and all of those kinds of things. And so, I mean, I think that's just kind of across the board. We all just have to be very generous with each other as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I I have to say I went to the grocery store yesterday because my friend uh, kind of put me into a panic (laughs) about 
this is going to be really bad. And she got me kind of ramped up. And so um, I've been in a little bit of, I wouldn't say quarantining myself, but I've been hibernating a little bit, which I will talk about in a second. But um, that's a, another topic. But yeah, for happier reasons, right? For happier reasons, I've been uh, self quarantining. <laughs> I've been in quarantine. Um, so she put me into kind of a panic. So yesterday I went to the grocery store to get some things. And of course, there's absolutely no hand sanitizer. There's no, mm -hmm. I got the last bottle of rubbing alcohol. Um, there's no cleaning products. Um, and there's signs up saying, you know, due to the current state of affairs, please limit yourself to five bottles mm -hmm. of whatever it is you're getting. Well, there's nothing there in the store. Yeah. And then when you walk through the aisles, this was at 1030 in the morning, but the, there's already like all, I got the last bag of black beans, dried black beans, mm -hmm. I should say. And I don't know how many people are cooking with dried beans, but anyway, uh, and. Normally not uh, very many. I can tell you that. <laughs> yes. Almost every and like, instant pot recipe that I've gone to look for, um, that has beans in it starts mm, with they're canned cooked. beans. Like, yeah. okay, wait, the Instant Pot can cook beans really fast. <laughs> Why would you start with canned beans? But yes, I know. that's what people and, do. Yeah. And then um, all the canned goods were decimated, the tomatoes and all the mm. canned beans. Um, the frozen food section was decimated. I got, I got one bag of corn and one bag of peas. <laughs> Um, just because I don't have any frozen vegetables, I thought, well, I guess I better get some. Mm -hmm. And then I, in case, yeah. But there's not a, I mean, a lot, like a lot of that kind of stuff that you can, and I don't typically buy packaged meals. I didn't buy any packaged meals like Hamburger Helper or anything like that. But a lot of that, that whole aisle was pretty much decimated too wow. at 10 30 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, and Betty said there was no one in the store and not a lot of choice. Yeah, it it uh, it. Re I had this feeling of when I did semester at sea in '88, and we went to uh, then the Soviet Union, uh, and going into a grocery store, and there was like you your vegetables of choice were potatoes, turnips, or beets. Mm -hmm. That was it. <laughs> there was mm -hmm. nothing. There was no frozen food. There was a, a couple of like I remember in one case there was like five sort of scrawny little chickens. Uh, that was it. And yeah. I thought, oh, this is like the Soviet system right now we're experiencing, you know, the, um, yeah, the shortages, limited, like, shortages. Yeah. Well, um, and at school, they left paper towels and cleaner in the classrooms finally. And um, when I, when I called this morning about the towels, that there were no towels in my classroom, I was told that people were taking them. So I'm glad it's the last day before spring break. And then everyone can, can yeah take a little bit of time to just stay home and but i know kelly you know we have a lot of listeners around the world yeah um and i'm hoping everybody's safe yes and me doing, too. and doing well because yeah. this is uh it's, it's a challenging time in all in every country it's last i heard 110 countries and yeah um no it's really it's 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 very serious mm -hmm. the markets the the oh, financial mm -hmm. markets are going up and down and you know, I mean, who doesn't have money uh, in s something? I mean, no matter where you have your money, it's affected in some way by the economy. Mm -hmm. um, even if you stick it in your mattress, it's affected by the <laughs> by the mm -hmm. economy, right? The value, and so it's been adding to the anxiety. And um, I did, I was sort of ramped up about it, and then I thought, well, what would Kelly say to me? <laughs> And Kelly would say to me, well, you can't do anything about it. So you might as well, might as well not worry about it. And so I called, we talked yesterday as I was about to go into the grocery store. And I said to you, <laughs> I'm all ramped up about it. And you said, well, there's nothing you can do about it. So don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Uh -huh. So I'm not really, I'm truly trying not to listen to any of this stuff uh, at all. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's why we have our knitting, right? Mm -hmm. To help us stay calm. And, and if we do have to be quarantined, we have at least something to, to entertain us while we're there. Yeah. I hope that all of our listeners are well and not ill and that their loved ones are safe as well mm -hmm. and, and that they have yes. plenty of knitting to, to help keep them sane. Is that a good segue to projects? Yeah. So do you want to start or? Sure. I don't have very okay. much to say. I'm currently knitting on the Marianne's cardigan. Uh, this is a pattern by uh, uh, Trina Bertelson. And it has crochet on the top and then in the uh, crocheted yoke. Um, and then a, 
uh, the body is knit. I've been talking about it for a little bit, for a while. I am having a little bit of trouble, I have to say, because I'm alternating skeins. It's a, uh, what is it? Blue Heron Cotton. And so it's got, uh, you know, it's got like the hand dyed look to it. I don't know if Blue Heron is hand dyed, but it's got kind of a semi-solid Mm -hmm. I think, look, and so I'm getting, you know, I'm getting stripes um, and blotches of different colors of blue. It, I'm not, I'm, it's not bothering me that this is happening. So that's not the problem. The problem is where I am alternating skeins. And I think my mistake, as soon as I split for the sleeves and cast on stitches, I should have moved my I should have moved the marker for the beginning of the row to the center of those 12 stitches in the underarm mm -hmm. because where my marker was for the beginning of the round and the alternation of skeins, it's in the front of the armhole. It's mm. like right before those 12 stitches, right? Mm -hmm. And so th those 12 underarm stitches. So it's still in the underarm. Mm -hmm. But it's toward the front of the underarm, mm. and it's not looking very good. It'll look good for a little while, for a few rows, and then all of a sudden it'll start looking very ugly where I hmm. am alternating the skeins. Like, you know, the stitches, because it's cotton yarn, mm, the yeah, stitches are less forgiving yeah. to tension. I'm hoping that it will snug up, you know, that the tension issues will kind of resolve themselves. And there have been a few places where my tension was off and I've kind of gone in with my with my uh, needle and kind of pulled pulled some stitches sideways a little bit and, you know, moved the yarn a little bit to even that out. But yeah, I'm in fact I actually I ripped out probably about five inches of the work I had done at stitches. Mm. Um because I didn't I just didn't like the way it was looking. And so I'm doing it again, and it's looking better. I'm being more careful in that little section, and it's looking better. But I kind of wish it was more centered under the arm instead of at the mm -hmm. front of the underarm. So we'll see. I again. Can you can you move it? Well, I mean, that's part of what I tried to do at stitches, but mm. it's obvious. Mm. Like unless I go back to where I cast on those twelve stitches all the way mm -hmm. back to there, rip all the way back to there and do it. Mm -hmm. um, moving it kind of made it look worse because then you have a, like a jog in your, in your mark, you know? And I kind of think that if I were to do this again, this sweater, I would use the technique. I, I need a list of all these little techniques that I've used in other sweaters <laughs> that I like, you know, and like why they're a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think what I would do if I were starting over is I would have like the Edie has a column of pearl stitches. Oh, right. You know how it, or yeah, that, that it's like, it's like a, it's a seam. faux seam, a fake yeah. seam. Yeah. yeah. And it would hide it because it would be different. It would sort of hide. Yes. The, the alternation. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, I think I knew that already. I think I did that in my um, Summer Fjord. Now that I'm saying this, I'm thinking I did that on the Summer <laughs> Fjord because I had to alternate skeins there, too, I think, mm -hmm. with that linen. And I think I, I opted to do a faux seam there for that very reason. And then, of course, with this one, totally forgot that that was even a thing I could do. So it's not terrible. I think it will be... I think it will be okay. Um, I don't think it will be super noticeable. I hate to even say this, but could you just rip it all the way back to the armholes and just since and just put in that faux seam? I could. I'm not I mean, sure. I, I, how far? How far? Because you said you'd ripped out the about five inches and re knit it, and now I'm back to about eight inches oh. on size threes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It it would be very painful. Yeah. To have to do that. And I Never mind. I'm not at that I'm not at the point where I hate it that much. Okay. It's actually it's it's there's a definite line. I mean, I can see the line, but mm -hmm. at least it's not a messy line. 
Yeah. Like it was. It was a very messy line. So anyway, that's just something to think about if you're having to alternate skeins in, in cotton, especially. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, I'm making good progress on it. I think it'll be fine. I've said that now about five times. Sometimes the number <laughs> of times you say, I think it'll be fine. When I'm listening to other podcasts and it's like, okay, now that person has said, I think it'll be fine so many times that I'm sure it's not fine. <laughs> right. I might have. I it, might. There should be a rule. Like if you say it three times, it's okay. <laughs> but if you say it five times, you have to rip it out. Yeah. Yeah. So I may, <laughs> you, it will, it, it remains to be seen whether I will edit this podcast and decide that I said it too many times. <laughs> yeah. So, but I did finish the dew drop shawl last mm-hmm. weekend. We had a little camping trip. Robert was doing a vintage trailer boot camp put on by vintage, vintage camper trailers. And uh, it was fun. He did the, all the classes. I did not. I took the dog and we sat in the, sat in the trailer and I crocheted and she just, hung out with me and we took walks and it rained a little bit. So it was kind of nice and cozy inside the trailer mm-hmm. and I managed to get this shawl done. So it's not blocked. Um, I have only two ends to weave in. Isn't that nice? Actually, no, the starting end I just crocheted over. So I only have one end to weave in at the end and then I just need to wash and block it. So I'm calling it done. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll, it's I'll, done. It's done for this episode. <laughs> right, exactly. I won't talk about it next time, and I'll probably, um, I'll probably put a picture of it in its current state in the show notes. Yeah, because it's beautiful. I, I'm, I'm going to say that about my own work. It's beautiful. No, it's, it's, it is very beautiful. I say it's very because it's hand spun. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and, and the colors are so nice of that loop mm-hmm. bump, that mm-hmm. that sort of eggplant. Eggplant to gray to turquoise gradient mm. is just really pretty. Yeah. So I'm looking forward and to it's, wearing And it was so interesting, too, when I was, and I don't know if it continued uh, for the rest of the shawl, but when I saw it, when I was down there for stitches, as the color changes sort of happened when the pattern changed. It was so interesting to I, me. I I think crochet looks like that more than oh, okay. Maybe. Okay. Because Robert said the same thing. How do you know when to change the color? And I said, well, I'm not. It's just, that okay. just happens in the yarn. And he's like, but it's, but the color is changing on the row. And it, it really isn't. If you go back and you look, you can see, but because oh, of okay. the way crochet rows are not just a line, mm-hmm. you, you, it's, it's not, it's not noticeable. You, okay. you can't really tell. It really looks like, it changes at the row. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. One of the benefits so I, of crochet. I have two questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one is, uh, Bailey, how did Bailey do camping in the trailer? This is her first trip, right? How did yeah, she do? She, she did great. I, I, I think, well, we didn't really have to leave her alone because Robert was the one taking classes until the last day. I went with Robert to the last class, which was like a, it was a presentation by a guy about insuring your trailer and appraising it and what the value of it is and all that stuff. And so I was worried about how she would be alone in the, you know, Mm -hmm. in her crate in the truck alone. And so we practiced and she did really well. And so by, by Sunday morning, uh, she had had enough practice and, and she just went in and she was quiet and she had a Kong that was filled with goodies, enough good stuff in it that that got her started. And then she just was, she seemed to be calm through the rest of it. I didn't have to play the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> but at home we do, uh, we are still, well, Robert's been off this week, so she hasn't been, had much time alone um, in the crate this week where we've had to do that, but. But it's been working. Playing the podcast has been working. So, yeah. <laughs> but she was happy. She she went into the trailer and uh, laid down under the table, which is a really small space. I was worried that she wasn't going to fit there very well. But she laid down under the table and she was really, I think she was super happy. She'd like to live in the trailer full time because she can see us at all times, you know? Yeah. It's like yeah. everybody's there where she can see them. It's the correct size of house. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. 
<laughs> she approves. Yeah. yeah. And then she had, she, we took a really, you know, we, we could take a really long walk and she liked that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, she did really, really well in the trailer. And I think we're going to have some fun camping trips. So I was worried about what we were going to do with her for the half marathon that is Saturday. Mm-hmm. But they actually canceled the, well, they, they made the half marathon into a virtual half marathon. So okay, and how does that work? <laughs> you don't, you don't, you just don't do it. You just sit on your chair. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting on my computer doing a half marathon. No, um, we just go and they're sending us all the, you know, the medal and the the finisher medal and our bib number and our t-shirts and mm-hmm. and we just go and do our thirteen point one miles wherever we want to. So oh, we're just okay. going to do it at Fort Ord using our regular trails mm-hmm. and make sure we do the right, the right distance. And I'm hoping we get our, our uh, bibs and stuff in time. Cause I was even going to wear my bib number and all that, mm-hmm. but I have a feeling they might not have been able to get all of it sent out in time yeah. for us to get yeah. it. So, but Bailey will be able to come with us. So that's nice. Yeah. 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 So that worked out. Okay. It's a little um, disappointing, but, but uh, yeah. You know, because I've been training You've for been it for tra- so yeah. long, but it served its purpose and got my foot back in shape. So, yeah. Um, my second question I was going to ask is when I was down uh, at your house waiting to go to Stitches, you had the two skeins of um, wool. Is it wool Oh, I never yes. Know the the wool mm-hmm. The wool and that you were trying to figure out what to make out of it. You're, you wanted to make a, a t shirt mm-hmm. and. You're going to combine it with another color. We talked about buying something at Stitches, but we didn't. You didn't do that. Where are you in the process on that? Or is nowhere? It- no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's still sitting in exactly the same. In fact, I should probably move it. It's still sitting in exactly the same place it was sitting when you were here mm. on the table in the sunroom. Yeah, I haven't done anything with that, but I have. I did start the weaving project. I've got. Um, I've got the warp started to be threaded onto the loom and that's what i'm going to focus my attention on over spring break i think is uh the weaving project that i have because it's supposed to have Mm -hmm. we're supposed to have a lot of rain Mm -hmm. this week which we need yeah and so i'll just it looks like we'll be i'll be staying inside and able to work on uh it's a my weaving project is uh i'm doing a ruana which is basically a big rectangle with a slit where mm-hmm. your neck goes. And it's the yarn is Cotswold yarn that I hand spun over probably over 20 years ago. Okay. When I was first, <laughs> it was my first fleece. Mm-hmm. And so I was a, a brand new spinner. And because, of course, as a brand new spinner, you buy a fleece, right? And process it right. from carding <laughs> all the way to the. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> well, in those days, in my defense, I, I I do I do tend to jump into things with both feet, but in those days there wasn't as much available in terms of just buying roving either. Well, I mean, I, I came to spinning later than you, but I did the same thing. Yeah. I have about eight fleeces that mm-hmm. I was like, oh my god, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to spin it and I'm going to make this mm-hmm. and and there they sit. Yeah, uh, and there's a lot more roving available, and so I don't have. I don't have that excuse. It's just, it's what you yes. do as a new spinner. Yeah. And so the mm-hmm. yarn has just... been sitting and I didn't know what I was going to do with it when I first made it. So it's not like I've had this project in mind for that long, but um, I have had the yarn for that long. So, mm-hmm. and it's now on the loom, partly mm-hmm. on the loom. So mm-hmm. anyway, that's it. That's all of my projects at this moment. I did nothing with that wool Miza yarn, but I do want to, mm-hmm. I just haven't. I just have really nice. spent any time thinking about it. Yeah. Again. So what about you? Okay. Well, I I touched on uh my self-imposed quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not quarantine, but uh, this is before all this happened. I Kelly, you and I had, had this conversation. I said, I sometimes feel I'm pulled in many directions by many different people in my lives, in my life, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so I decided to just have a, a what I call a staycation. Um, and I don't even know if that's really the correct 
thing because I'm not doing anything necessarily that fun, but I there was things I needed to take care of. I need to get my taxes done. Uh, I had to, I have some projects around the house. I need to get a new deck. So I was trying to, I needed to get, um, I'm in the process of getting, I've had two estimates. Well, I haven't gotten them yet, but two people have come mm, to give mm. me an estimate. And I have a third coming on um, uh, Tuesday to give me an estimate for a new deck. I'm dreading to think what it's going to cost. But, <laughs> um, you know, and I need, I, I need uh, the, the house in my house in Ballard. I'm getting ready to rent. I need to have someone come and look at the furnace. I need to do some work on that house. Um, I need, have to have some work done on my car, all these little things that have just sort of been, it, it's hard to find the time. Right. Well, and you've been gone. You I've been gone. Iceland, and then you were in. Yeah. Two and a half weeks in Iceland and I'm home about 10 days and I leave for about a weekend at your house. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I just, and like yard work and just all these things that I was falling behind and getting done. So, and I want to do some fun things too. Right. Um, I wanted to do, I still want to call it craftsy and it's not called craftsy blueprint. I want to do an online, uh, one of their classes on color work. I also wanted to work on some of my projects. I wanted to work on my rabbit that I started how many months ago. I wanted to oh, work yeah. on that skull I started how many months ago. So I had, I've had about a week. It's not been very long, maybe 10 days that I pretty much had, uh, if anybody wanted to get together for coffee, I said no. Um, just cause I wanted to have just mm-hmm. the whole day to myself to do some of these things. So I've made pretty good progress. So you had a Taxes spring break, a spring break from people. Yes. So, um, you know, the taxes are done. Uh, well, they're not done, but they're at the account and they just came back to me. I have to sign them to, you know, mm-hmm. send my money in. Um, and I, as I say, I'm getting the estimates. I had a plumber come and fix the leaky faucet, the sink that wouldn't drain, the toilet that the <laughs> tank wouldn't fill. I mean, all these little things were just driving me nuts, you know. And so I've been making a lot of progress. Oh, that's good. And I've, and I've been knitting a lot at night. I've not done my class yet. That was the other thing, too, is I want just a day where I had no interruptions to mm-hmm. just take my class. And I, I've i been doing a lot of cleaning. So it hasn't happened, but I'm still in the middle of it. I'm still... Um, I'm making a few exceptions. I had, you know, the usual suspects came for dinner on Saturday and, um, I'm, um, Kim who Mm -hmm. went to Iceland. Everyone knows Kim. Uh, it's her birthday on Tuesday. So we are going out to dinner. Hopefully we're going out to dinner. The restaurant will be open. We're going out to dinner on Tuesday. So I'm making a few exceptions, but I'm pretty much just hanging out and just getting things done. And I feel a lot better. It's amazing how much better I feel getting a lot of this weight off my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, well, that's good. You're going to have to use this. um, You're going to have to remember this, this tool. Yeah. And nobody's missing me. I mean, mean, it's fun. Like nobody's like, Oh my God, where are you? No, I'm here. I just, (laughs) it's um, just taking Mm -hmm. a little uh, break kind of. And um, yeah, so it feels good. And I, and little things like it's such a silly thing, but I wanted, to, I've been making a lot of bread and I wanted a bread box. So I ordered a bread box. Mm-hmm. So I just say time to define like what bread box do I want? And I ordered that. And, um, what was it? So, oh, I know I went downtown. The other thing, and this is maybe I, I don't think I talked about this, but I, um, I wanted a desk pad, you know, those blotters oh, that yeah. you put on your desk to protect mm-hmm. the wood. And, um, this is interesting. I will put a link um, to the name of the shop because um, I'm drawing a complete blank right now because I wasn't really planning on talking about this. There's a shop in downtown Seattle. It's in the, um, at the Fairmont Olympic because they have shops you know, in the hotel. Oh, yeah. Anyway, it's all stationary. You can have custom-made stationary and invitations and stuff, but they also have desk accessories. And I'm kind of blown away in this day and age that – they sell it, first of all, because I was looking online and there was not a lot of options. I mean, everything directs me to Amazon and mm-hmm. Amazon had like three. That was it. And Pottery Barn, they were $500 or something, what? which is ridiculous. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, this company down in the hotel it has two names. Uh, they sell them. They don't have them in stock, but he has – there's a woman who custom makes them for you. Oh, wow. And so, and you can either, she has a, a book with all the fabric that she, um, you can just have, you know, that she'll make them for you. Uh, or you can bring your own fabric in. 
Hmm. And I think they're, I think the blotter is, it's still kind of expensive. It's like a hundred, it's a little over a hundred dollars. I think like $125, I think, but that's better than 500 yeah. and it's leather. It's, it's, I'm getting an apple green leather. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I just I want a desk pad. I I write. I don't know if any maybe people don't write anymore, <laughs> but I write. <laughs> I write checks. I write notes to myself. Yep. I write. You know, people I write don't a write lot. Checks. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I but seem to, people I write know. notes and people write in their planners. Lots of people uh-huh. have, have physical paper planners. Yeah. Even young people, it's a it's a big thing. It's retro now to have mm-hmm, a paper planner. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I will put a link to the name of the shop. And um, okay. if anybody wants a desk blotter and handmade. Nice. That's kind of cool. That's my kind of my little staycation. I've been taking care of all these little things that have been weighing on my mind that I wanted to do. I have an electrician coming tomorrow. Um, I have someone coming to caulk the windows and repair the fireplace Mm-hmm. In the basement, you know, I had a new firebox put in, a new mantle, but they have to now fix the wall around it. So all those little things. Yeah. Anyway, but knitting, I, what I've been doing with knitting. I haven't even touched my Dusk into Twilight shawl. That's the one I took to Iceland and worked on. Mm-hmm. And that's with our um, the yarn that you dyed. Um, I haven't even picked that up. So I won't. Um, I'm sitting here now knitting on the John O'Groats socks that I've been working on periodically. And that's the yarns from the plain sock yarn that I bought at the um, Kate Nose Craft Collective um, retreat uh-huh. in Scotland. And then, remember the suspense from last episode? Oh, right. You like, weren't going to tell us until next. Yes. <laughs> so I cast You didn't on, even tell me what you were talking about. I know. <laughs> Anyway, I completely forgot last episode, so I decided to keep everybody in suspense. So it's not that exciting, but I started another uh, pullover, and this one is called Isle of Hote, and by Beatrice oh, Perron. I remember you talking Dallin. about this pattern. And it's um, I'm using Imperial Yarn, or excuse me, the yarn is Columbia from Imperial Yarns in Oregon, and it's Aaron Weight, and. I have, I'm trying to think when I cast this on. I don't remember now. Because it's air and weight, it's going really fast. So I have, it's a bottom up sweater. So I've knit the body and now that's been set aside and I finished the first sleeve and I'm now halfway through the second sleeve. Oh, wow. So it's basically a stockinette sweater with raglan sleeves and the sleeves have a lace pattern that goes, uh, you know, the full length of the sleeve. And then the neckline has like a um, like a tube, uh, like a funnel. I mean, it's like a turtleneck kind of. But uh-huh. Is that what you call a tube? Uh, tube or like neck? a funnel neck. Funnel neck. Kind that's of. what I want. Yeah. It yeah. Just I remember talking about this pattern. You had two patterns that you were mm-hmm. trying to decide between. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going pretty fast because it is air and weight. Um, I do find... Do you find that the heavier the yarn is, even though I'm using, I'm using number, I think I'm using eight. I'm using basically the needles that it calls for in the pattern and I'm getting the gauge that it calls for in the pattern. But it's, it gets, it feels tight on my needles much more so than um, like I'm knitting on my socks, which are ones, I think. Mm-hmm. It's, um, and they're metal needles. So it's, and my sock needles are metal needles. Do you ever have that experience on heavier or larger needles that it doesn't I, seem like it slides as well? Yeah, I think that's true. My, my most recent experience with, with large needles is like size 19s for that yeah. Sunny Bono jacket. But so that's a little different. But yeah, I think, I think that might be true if I think back. I don't know. I don't use those size of needles very often. Yeah, I don't think I. I don't remember the last thing I made on eights I, yeah. at all. So, um, so what I'm doing though is the I wanted about four inches of ease. I and the pattern my size choices were forty two or forty six, and I wanted a forty four. So what I did is I cast on. Um, I'm following the forty two. Mm-hmm. But I I incre- I cast on an extra um, because it's just when you you slow down, Marsha. What am I trying to say? You cast on and there's no waist shaping or any mm, in, yeah. on the body. So I just cast on eight extra stitches to give me two extra inches of ease. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to decide what I'm gonna do when I get up to the neckline. I don't think it's really gonna 
we'll have to see because there's going to be short row shaping on the yoke. Uh-huh. And so I may have to, I haven't decided until like the may, I'll ask you this ca- question, Kelly. Do you think I need to take out some of those, take out those eight stitches when I get up to the shoulder and the neck or just keep trying it on and figuring it out as I go along? Yeah. Or do I just. Well, you know, some of those stitches, I mean, you could just decrease the stitches away in the, the raglan sleeve decreases. Oh, right. Because that's. What, four decreases in each round? Mm-hmm. And so so that would just mean you'd have to do two extra, two yeah. to four extra rows. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, I would say just kind of try it on and see. Yeah. And if you did that, then you'd get back down to the stitches that the pattern calls for, for the right. shoulders. Mm-hmm. And your shoulders at a size 42 would probably be fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's so kind of what I yeah. I was sort of thinking, but I also thought I just want to you know, hey, you have that moment where you just want to cast on. You don't mm-hmm. want to think it all the way through. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and we've talked about several times about how the arm size dimension is often a little too short, mm-hmm. and so adding in the extra rows would would give you a little more length. Yes. For the and sleeve. So, you, yeah, that, that might work perfectly. So the other thing I should say about this is that you, um, uh, I just cast on for the body and knit up to the armholes. That set aside. I'm doing my technique where I just do a provisional cast mm-hmm. on for the sleeves and knit up. My dilemma, though, is the pattern, what you're supposed to do is cast on, I think it's 41 stitches, but cast on for the cuff knit four rows of garter stitch and then one row of stockinette and then you start your pattern okay so my dilemma is i'm now going to be uh, and it says knit the sleeves till they're 16 inches well 16 inches for me is not quite long enough yeah but this is always my dilemma and this is why i do it this way is once you attach the sleeves to the body and you try to, you don't know where that armhole is going to fit you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't want the armhole right up in your armpit, obviously, right? And you also don't want it down at your waist. It's going to be <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> right. But, you you know, each sweater fits a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. And so I, the reason why I like my technique is then I can, once I've attached the sleeves, finished the collar, I can try on the sweater and then knit down and do the cuff. My problem or my my question, concern, thought, whatever, is because the lace starts so right at the cuff, mm-hmm. what if I have to add two inches? I can't put the, the lace pattern in because the la- the lace pattern is knit to be knit right. up. Now I'm gonna be knitting down. You'll just have well, a you you could just have a longer cuff. So that's what I'm thinking it is I don't think it will look bad to have Instead of four rows of garter stitch, yeah. maybe I have eight rows of garter oh, stitch. Oh, yeah, I think that would be fine. I think it will look fine. Yeah, but I also, but I also, because I think it might look weird. This is not going to happen. But what if I had eight? Like, what if I instead yeah. of having, and right now the four rows of garter stitch is about an inch. Having eight rows, which would be around two inches, I think would look fine. But what if you had four or five inches of that would look really weird. I don't think that. So that's what I'm saying is yeah. I have to sort of figure out is 16 inches really going to be right or do I, I need yeah. a little bit longer? When you, when you um, are ready to attach, use mm-hmm. those clips you bought Yeah, and attach it, not with knitting, but just attach with the clips, the sleeves. Oh, right. And try it on. Okay. You know, as though you had connected it all together onto one needle. You know, that's what you normally do, right? Then you put the sleeves and the body all on one needle. Mm-hmm. Um, just connect them with the clip, with the clips. And would you, I was also thinking I should probably wash and block the body because it's a curling up so much. Do you think I should wash and block the body and the sleeves? Before you I do could, this. could, yeah. That way you can tell what that curling effect, without that curling effect in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you okay. have a be- you'll have a better idea, but you could, I mean, you could just pull it down, you know, roll it down and see. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, as long as you're going to go to that trouble, you might as well you might as well measure it. It, it might be an extra step that might be worth it. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It okay, won't hurt so then anyway, I mean, that's yeah. that's the bottom line. It won't hurt. Yeah. So, and then the last thing I'm going to say though is about the yarn. Mhm. So, as I said, it's Columbia from Imperial Yarn. Um, and I've never I've had the experience where I've had knots in a skein, but it's one at the most two. Mm-hmm. This has so many knots in it. I I tend to I would say between ten and fifteen knots per skein. Oh my gosh! And it's a it's a two ply. It's a woolen spun two ply. Sometimes it's both. Uh, they just the whole yarn's just been knotted. Sometimes it's one of the plies has been knotted. Yeah, and I've never had this experience, and um, I don't know if this is. Is this normal? Is this not normal? Is I was surprised that the company thought this was okay, mm-hmm. or I maybe they didn't know. I, I you know maybe it's one of how much how much control do yarn right. companies this have might be over one skein and the rest of, and it might be unusual or like one batch because it's or, in more than oh, one yeah, skein because you have more than one skein. I think I have six skeins. Yeah, and I've used I've used. Three, I think. Hmm. I wonder if it was, yeah. if because you said you bought this on sale. Yeah. Like in the sale bin. Maybe that's why it was in the sale bin. That's maybe it I'm was wondering. like a discontinue or a seconds. Yeah. But it seems like they would tell you that at the yarn shop. Yeah. So I'm just kind of curious if anybody um, has used this yarn before, if they've had the same experience or if it's just... Um, it was like a. It was just this mm-hmm. batch. They had this problem, you know. And I, I I'm not. Um, uh, and and it really is not a problem. I what I've been doing is just breaking it um, and mm-hmm. spit splicing it. And because it's woolen spun, it's really easy. Yeah. I think this would be a real problem. Like if you had a lace weight silk and you're making a shawl or my cotton a, yarn that I'm working with right now. Right. Oh my yeah. God, anything, that would be a pain. Yeah. Anything that you can't spit splice, mm-hmm. you'd have all those ends you have to weave in. And then if you get into lace weight, like sometimes it's hard to h- hide yeah. the uh, mm-hmm. weaving in the ends in a, in a lace weight shawl, mm-hmm. you know? La- yeah. If you're actually doing lace patterns. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, that's, it's, it's good that it's, it's good that it's wool and spun wool mm-hmm. because it does make it easy to deal with. But it, it's interesting, you know, when I, when um, a year ago, when Kim and I went to Madrona, it's now called, I think, Red Cedar, I think. Red Alder. We went, Red, oh my God, I, I sorry, I do that all the time. Red birch, red fir, or something with it. It's so, red oak, red something, something with a tree. Some tree that's red. <laughs> some tree. Well, and I always want to call it Red Twig, too, because there's a coffee <laughs> shop up in Edmonds called Red Twig. <laughs> When we were uh, there a year ago, and we went to Brooklyn Tweed, uh, Kim mentioned that a sweater that she had made out of, um, it's not loft, it's something else, I can't remember, the, that she had a problem that it wore a hole in the sweater. She hadn't worn the sweater very much, and she got a hole in it. Oh, and he said, yes, yeah. he said, yes, he said, we had problems with that yarn, and he sold this yarn at a discount for us to try it again, To and so... Uh, I'm wondering, like, if people give companies feedback, then they go, oh, we, then they realize they have a problem with their yarn. I, I wonder if anybody's had problems with, you know, if listeners mm-hmm. have used Imperial Yarn Columbia, if they've had problems with it, and do, do people ever call the company and say, I've had a, you're, like, your yarn has a lot of knots in it. And they yeah. like, we had no idea. We're going to go back and talk to the mill, you know? Maybe, yeah. Um, so Kelly, let's talk about our events that we are the events that we're participating in. Okay. Well, first of all, we have a giveaway thread finally from last episode. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh! With all of the ticking drama that happened, when I realized that that ticking was going on, um, I totally forgot then that I was supposed to open a thread for the Cosmic Crisp yarn giveaway. Mm-hmm. So that has been opened. It's in Ravelry. You have to be a member too participate and what i'm asking people to do is to take a look at the apple fiber studio yarns and let us know what is your favorite yarn base of hers or and or colorway and then also what is your favorite apple if you have a favorite apple because cosmic crisp (laughs) is a type of apple Mm mm-hmm 
and there there's quite a few people who have entered already. It it will be open until April twelfth. Um, I made it go a little bit longer since I forgot to open the thread. So mm-hmm. it'll go until April twelfth, and then we'll draw a winner and announce it on the podcast. It'll be fun. Yeah. Do you have a favorite apple? I typically buy Fuji or Honeycrisp, mm-hmm. but um, so. Anyway. All right. And the giveaway yarn is in the Aurora Borealis colorway. So it's a really nice combination of blues and greens. And it's really, it's really pretty. I should put a picture in the, in the thread. um, Oh yeah. I haven't done that. I'll put, I'll put a picture up in the, in the, in the giveaway thread. So you can be tempted by how beautiful it is. (laughs) Let's see. Oh, okay. And then Kelly, the winter weave along. Yes. I have to get my, the reason I have to get my weaving in gear is because the winter weave along ends this month. So it goes all the way till the end of March. Uh, So, so you still have, you still have a little bit of time and people are putting things in the finished objects thread. Um, Just about every morning for the last week, there's been something new. So lots of weavers are getting, getting their weaving finished and putting it into that thread. So if you're weaving, Put your finished objects into the winter weave along thread. I sadly do not think I'm going to be finished, but there's always hope. Mm-hmm. I, I could, I could be finished, uh, maybe by the end of March. We'll see. Depends on depends on how much uh, how much training it takes to be able to do a Zoom conference. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so anyway, that's... Well, I was just reading uh, Morning Coffee in our group on Ravelry, mm-hmm. and somebody said it's really, really easy. Because I've been sort of concerned about, like, I might need a little hand-holding mm-hmm. to get through this. And they said it's very easy, so... Oh, good, yeah. I'm, I'm encouraged. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I've heard the same thing, and I, I did a little testing of it the other day. So, yeah, if my moving my classes to online doesn't take too much time, I could potentially finish my Ruana by the end <laughs> of the month, but it it'll be it'll be uh it, it's let's just say the probability is not high. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but other people are getting their projects finished and getting them into the thread and it's been great to see all of the really pretty things that people are weaving. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And then we have fun. our Northern California Knitting Retreat, April 2nd to 5th. While editing, I thought I should pop in and say that right after we finished recording, we did get news that the Knockers Retreat was canceled. Uh, so that's very sad. And so we dispensed with the rest of the events because things are so uncertain. Um, and we'll hop right to the next part of the podcast. That's it, I think, for events. Um, yeah, and, um, yeah. We uh, do have the thread in the um, Ravelry group about what kind of events people are interested in us having in terms of mm-hmm. alongs. Um, and we'll talk about that in a future episode, um, what are some of the things that people have said, and we'll do some planning for for what kind of things we'll do. Uh, once the winter weave along is over, and once this uh, cosmic crisp giveaway is over, what are what are mm-hmm. we going to do next between us? But we'll have that conversation between now and maybe the next episode or the one yeah. after that. Yeah, maybe have something going on for the summer. So I think that's it for events, and then well, yeah, you had a story that didn't get we didn't get a chance. No, to tell we were going to use it. No, when I went to the airport um, uh, to fly down to California to go to stitches. I go, I'm going through security and we get to a certain point in the the security, the security line. I, first of all, I have to say it was really long, but at a certain point we get to a part where they make us go two by two uh, and we, and then they have a dog, a a dog sniffing for explosives. As I found out later, um, walking between us. I have no idea what the dog did, but the dog indicated that I need to be pulled out of line. So I was pulled out of line and taken um well it was still the whole security area where all of the scanners are and the your like your carry-ons go through but that but i was pulled aside and and i could hear them talking on the radio um about me first of all they thought it was the other person and they said no it's the woman in the plaid shirt which was me um and then he says and then he says to me do you have any idea why the dog would be sniffing you know it would indicate that you need to be pulled out of line i'm like i don't know i have a dog with that 
like, but now that I know about dog training, that's ridiculous because mm-hmm. they're trained to sniff for explosives, not other dogs. Right? That doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. But, but that's anyway. True. That's true. Um, so I have no idea why. But I, and they started asking me all these questions. Um, like, uh, where have I been? Who have I seen? Who did I see um, at my house? Who did I see on my way to the airport? Did I stop anywhere on the way to the airport? Did anybody touch my bags at my house or on the way to the airport? I mean, like all these questions. And um, the um, and then finally, that's on the way to then they take me to another area. And they did ask me if I wanted to have... Um, they had to do a have to search me and my belongings and did I want to go into a private office? And I said, no, I'm fine here, not knowing what was going to happen to me. <laughs> I should have. I wish I had gone someplace private because it it felt very. Um, I felt kind of violated, honestly. That there's a lot mm-hmm. of hands. Uh, it was a, a woman who uh, was touching me. And I was held up for uh, quite a long time, 15 minutes or so, while they waited for someone, to her supervisor, to come over. And her supervisor actually was a man who never came over. He just basically stuck his head out of a door to watch what was going on. And then she ran her hands all up and down my legs, around my butt, up into my crotch, you know, over my clothes, down my waist, mm-hmm. so she pulled my pants away from my body, my jeans, to all around my waist, up my shirt, around over my breasts, everything. I was, <laughs> and at this point, I'm sort of thinking to myself, I wish I had gone someplace private for all of this, <laughs> right? Right. Um, <laughs> but but the thing is, I, I what I want to say about this whole experience was how I was treated, and I didn't do anything wrong. I was just, I bought a ticket to get on a plane. I didn't do anything differently than I normally do. I wasn't traveling, carrying anything different, anything different. I just was going through Mm -hmm. security, waiting to get onto my plane. And I had this experience. And what I was shocked by was how I was treated. I was treated like I had done something wrong, like I was a criminal. And this, Mm -hmm. this experience of not, um, they wouldn't tell me why I was being stopped. They wouldn't tell me what the dog was sniffing for. Um, they wouldn't, um, they didn't explain to me what was going to happen that maybe I did want. When I said I didn't need a private room, they didn't explain to me how invasive this search was going to be and that maybe I didn't mm-hmm. want a private room. Um, yeah. She wouldn't answer any questions because uh, I, I, I didn't know why it was taking so long. And then that's when she told me, she did say that they were waiting for her supervisor to come over. Cause I said, I don't know why. I mean, why don't you just start searching me? Why am I standing here with my arms spread out? Mm-hmm. Like I have to stand with my legs spread and my arms out while they wait for the supervisor. And then I'm getting, I'm getting hot too, because I'm a little stressed by all of this. And I was waiting to, I to had everything on. I wanted to get to my, my seat or my sit someplace in the airport and have a cup of coffee and some breakfast and just kind of relax. So just carrying everything, I started getting hot. And when I would take my hands down, I went, I went to lower my hands to take off my wool shirt to, cause I was getting so hot. Mm-hmm. I was reprimanded. Keep your arms up. And, um, what I wanted to say about this experience and I is, and I have to be careful how I say this because I, I am a white person. And I don't know what it's like to be a person of color. But when I had this experience, I had this little tiny peek into what it must be like to be a person who's being stopped and frisked by yeah. a police officer. Yeah. And it does not feel good. It feels threatening and invasive and um, scary. It, it was scary. I was scary. And I knew I had done nothing wrong. I had done nothing wrong. But it still, I felt scared. And what Mm -hmm. was so strange, too, is the woman who was, this young woman who was doing all this frisking and being so um, awful to me, and beyond rude, it was sort of like, uh, it's a power thing to be, to keep somebody in the dark and not to give them the information about and explain what is happening. It's a power play, kind of. Mm -hmm. Or even just to say, you know what? I just can't give you any mm-hmm. information. 
That's part of our yeah. protocol. Uh, you know, you could say yeah. that nicely, and it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't change the fact that you are still in. You are still there, waiting to be. It's searched. very dehumanizing, and the way she yeah. acted with me, and then I went. And when it was over and I was able to get my belongings and my shoes and sort of regroup, I could see her laughing with her friends, like water cooler talk, you know, you're all sitting around talking, right, laughing right. kind of. And I'm not saying she was laughing at me in the experience, but she's just a normal right. person that is doing her job. Right. But her job right. is to be horrible to people. <laughs> like, that's her job. Right. Right. And I, but in the real thing is like, my, my real point of this is I, as a white person, I think I had this little tiny peek of what it must be like to be a person of color who stopped by the police and how that must mm -hmm. feel. And I, but I, I can go back to my life, right? I can go back to my world. Right. I can go get on my plane. I can go do all this stuff. I had... Right, it's not happening. It's to not you happening all the to time. me all the time. You don't have to worry and that I, it's going to happen to yeah. you. Often. It's not happening to yeah. me all the time, and yeah. it's not happening to me when I go into the store and I don't have anybody following me. You don't have to worry that it's happening right. to Ben. Yeah, right. But yeah. I think it's really yeah. important, and it was really good to have this experience and to to have this little tiny peek to see and how awful mm -hmm. it feels. Um, mm -hmm. It was, yeah. it was eye-opening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and that's really what I was thinking the whole time is I, I, I don't, I can't even be, I think I can, well, I was going to say I can't imagine. I can sort of begin to imagine, but I don't really fully, mm -hmm. truly, fully understand what it's like. But I had a, but I had a little bit, a little empathy. bit of understanding. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't I like I don't wish that on anybody. Mm -hmm. No. I meant to talk about this in the last episode, but we went so long that oh, yeah. um yeah, it we ran out of time. I arrived at in in San Jose. I would say Kelly wasn't I a bit flustered when I I was well oh, and yeah, I had calmed yeah. down, but I was telling you the story. And that was the whole flight. You you had the whole flight to kind of Yeah, I had regroup. the whole flight yeah. to regroup and I by the time I got off the plane, I was feeling better. And I was grateful that I could just go get in your car. But I told you the story and you got kind of upset hearing yeah. me talk about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like we both kind of had to. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, yeah, again. Privilege, privilege yeah. right? We can just, we can just say, well, that's mm -hmm. a one-off experience and, and then calm ourselves back down over it. So, but yeah, no, it does, it does give you a, a, a whole different a whole different view that you might, you know, it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to actually yeah. experience it. I'm repeating myself, but I think it's worth repeating. I experienced it for, uh, if you want to say from this, the time they stopped me until I could sort of calm myself down by the time I got off the plane. Um, and, and the whole thing was maybe 30 to 40 minutes long. And now, mm -hmm. and I've moved on to my life. Um, Right. So I'm not, I don't, I'm not living with it every day. Yeah. To bring it back, to bring it back to a, a, a lighter note, we, Marsha and I started laughing that, that um, she had been reported as yeah. a bomber. bomber. <laughs> uh, yeah. So oh, I'm the, the uh, yes, yeah, a suspected yarn bomber. But, uh, well, anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's it. I uh, hope everyone stays well and safe and sane uh, with with uh, all of the in you know sort of uh, uncertainties that are out there um, uh, around the world. All of the yeah. uncertainties around the the coronavirus. Um, and um, again, really glad that we have each other and our knitting. I know. And uh, I know because, well, the people I know have lots of yarn. So even if you are quarantined, uh, right, you'll have plenty of stash. I know I have plenty of stash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, goodness. Okay. I have lots of supplies. So, okay, Kelly, I think that's it. And we will talk All in right. two weeks. All righty. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, 
visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the 2us doing, doing our, our part, part for, for World Fleece. Fleece.